Today's episode of Film Rides brought to you by Netflix. Today on Film Right, we build a DIY boom pole for 25 bucks. Welcome to Film Riot Mondays. I'm your host, Ryan Conley, and Christmas is over, kids. I hope everyone had a great holiday weekend. I know I had a blasty with my family. I showed them the Christmas special and giggled as my mom cringed at the more violent moments. Good times. It's good, good times. Any balls today, I shall address with great vigor this question. Hey, Ryan, first, Merry Christmas. Second, I don't have money to spend on a boom pole for my mic. Do you know how to build one? Nope, I sure don't, but I can try to figure it out. First thing to do in a moment like this, of course, is to visit the lovely Manland O Home Depot. Not that it isn't for women too, I just like to feel all manly and toolery. So we made our trip to Home Depot and wandered through looking for things, pretending we knew what we were doing, but not really. And then when people would ask you if you need help, you're like, ah, no, of course not. I'm a man, I know what I'm looking for. Then you aimlessly walk around a bit. But we finally found some stuff which we figured could indeed make a very simple and effective uh, boom pole for wicked, wicked cheap. The first thing we have here is a device that's actually used to uh, replace light bulbs that are high up in the ceiling. Now you could use absolutely anything uh, that has this uh, adapter for this, like a broomstick for instance, just unscrew the broom from it and the broomstick will work fine. The reason I'm using this one is A, I already had it so it didn't cost me anything, and B, it extends. This thing's pretty cheap. I don't remember exactly how much it cost, but I think it was around 20 bucks. So it would only take your boom pole situation up to about 45 bucks. So first we went into the plumbing section of Home Depot to look at the PVC connectors. First we got a, uh, a T-joint, which looks like this. This is a two inch T-joint. Then we got a bushing, which looks like this. This one is an inch and a quarter. And then we got another bushing, which has the half inch threading. And this one is a half inch. Also, you'll find in that same plumbing PVC aisle some uh, multi-purpose uh, PVC cement. And then uh, we went over an aisle and found these bad boys, which are the easy cable clips. They're, you could use them to hang pictures, or mostly they're just used to secure uh, cabling when doing electrical work. Then we got some cable ties or zip ties, whatever you want to call them. And then some rubber bands, which you could pretty much get anywhere. So I'm going to take just a bit of PVC glue, put it inside the one inch, the bottom of the one inch T-joint. So I can then take my inch and a quarter bushing and shove it in there, and let it dry. And now we've stopped this two inch down to one and a quarter inch. Next, I'm gonna take my inch and a quarter to half inch. And then I'm gonna again add just a little bit of glue, this time inside of the inch and a quarter bushing. Then insert the inch and a quarter to half inch bushing. And now we've stopped down from two inches to the inch and a quarter threading that we need. So first we take a zip tie and pop it on there. Then we're gonna take the cable clips and wedge them in, two on the top, two on the bottom, making sort of an X pattern. And then once they're in and in the position we want them to be, we're gonna take a Leatherman or a pliers of some kind and just tighten it a bit more. And then once we have that, just cut off the excess. And now we're gonna add our rubber bands. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take two rubber bands, then double them up so we got four strands and go from the top to an adjoining bottom, then do it again. And now you should have made a nice X shape with your uh, rubber bands. So now that this is finished, we can take our shotgun mic and put it in the center of the rubber bands. So we have our shotgun mount and now we're ready to mount it on whatever we want to use as our pole. Logo. So now with our DIY shock mount finished, we could take the pole of choice, mine being this light bulb remover extender pole, but you can use anything. Any broom is going to have this same half inch threading on the end there. So we're going to be able to connect it to the half inch threading on this. And there you go. We have our DIY boom pole, which we can connect our XLR to, and we're done. Now the reason we have the, uh, the rubber bands here and it, the mic suspended in between the T-joints is because the rubber bands are acting like a shock and isolating the mic from any sort of vibrations that's gonna happen from your operator touching the pole. Now, I would suggest adding a rag or something like that, maybe duct tape something soft on here, maybe those bike uh, handle, you know, soft thingamabobbers here that will isolate even more sound and protect your mic more from any form of vibration or movement that's coming from your hand. But these rubber bands are gonna do a lot to eliminate all those sorts of noises from your operator. Now, let's take a quick break, then we're gonna see how this baby works and give you a few tips for operating the boom. 
Netflix rocks over 23 million members, which makes it the largest subscription service streaming TV episodes and movies over the web, which is freaking great to have around the holidays since all your nephews and nieces come over to your house and they're just like la, 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 all around the place. But I just popped on Netflix and threw on a colorful cartoon of their choice and peace returned once again unto my abode. It was a lifesaver for me yesterday, I must say. You can have Netflix for one low monthly price, then stream as many movies as you like over a ton of devices like the Xbox 360, Sony PS3 console, and the Nintendo Wii console. Watch as many movies as you want anytime you want and you can cancel anytime. For a limited time, get a free 30 day trial membership. Go to netflix.com forward slash film right and sign up now and be sure to use the URL so they know that we sent you. And uh, they'll be like, thanks, and we'll be like, thanks, and you'll be like, nice. Logo. So here we have our $25 DIY boom pole and shock mount being utilized. And I gotta say, I'm extremely impressed with how well this stupid thing worked. Most uh, boom poles and shock mounts are gonna run you a few hundred dollars. We made this thing for $25 and it's actually working just as well as our really expensive boom pole and shock mount. As you can see, you're not hearing any uh, of the, the noises from the vibrations of Bruno moving around. That's because like I told you before, the rubber bands are isolating the shotgun mount and absorbing all of the sound that we would have heard if it was just put right on it and it's working really really well and if you get a pole like this one that we had the the pole for removing light bulbs you can extend it to as far as you want to get out of the shot but now that we have it all made and are using it here's a few tips for using your diy boom pole and shock mount whenever you're booming an actor you want to make sure to get it as close to them as you possibly can that way you can turn down your mixer as much as possible since you're getting closer to the mic the the actor's voice will be louder and the room noise will be lessened the clo the further you get it the more you're getting the overall room and ambience and the uglier your sound is going to be. That's where you're going to get a lot of that hiss because you're bringing up what's called the noise floor. So, so get as close as you possibly can to your actor with your mic. The other thing is, is how is Bruno is holding it? You want to hold it up as high as you can to keep it out of the framing and make sure you're talking and communicating with your cinematographer and your cameraman. Ask them like, where is my frame line? So you can get that mic as close as possible without getting in the frame. Another thing is, is the direction of the mic. Shotgun mics are very directional microphones. You want to point it directly at your actor's mouth. You can think of it like a gun. So you're aiming at your actor's mouth. The more aimed towards the actor's mouth where the sound is coming from, the better the sound is going to be. With a shotgun mic, if wherever it's aimed is where it's picking the mic. So here's a good example. Start moving it away from me. One, two, three, four. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 14, 15, 16, 17. You can see the sound radically change depending on where it's pointed. So if it's pointing away, you're once again gonna get a lot of ambience from the room. And once again, you're going to get ugly sound. And my final tip is if you're booming and you're finding that you're having a lot of boom shadows because of the light from above, an option is you can boom from underneath. The only thing with this is it's gonna radically change the quality of audio. It's gonna sound a lot differently because the sound is bouncing off of your environment differently and heading towards the mic. So it's not necessarily going to sound worse. In some cases it will. You might get more of an echo. Um, but as you can see from up and below, there is a major difference in how this sounds. But there you go, our $25 DIY boom pole and a few tips to using it. And again, I'm really impressed with this stupid cheap thing. I think if you got yourself some black spray paint, it actually would be passable on a film set. It doesn't look bad at all and it doesn't sound too bad either. But that's it for today's episode. Again, if you haven't seen the Christmas episode, please go check that out on our YouTube page. You can follow me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash Ryan underscore Conley. Also our Facebook page uh, here. And I'll see you guys next week. Ryan out. Bring it, you gotta, you gotta come this way. Just bring it, just bring it with you. Yeah, there you go.